We started speaking about this fascinating topic, which many uh, never heard, and if we identify the exact, exact first source. I was even telling my daughter, who usually knows every midrash that I say, about the Yaina, that the original oil came from the Yaina, the dove, that Shem Benach made the oil out of the Alei's eyes from the the leaf of, of uh, it's actually the Alei's eyes, the leaf of of the olive tree that that the Yonah brought back, and she was fascinated by it. And all the whole concept that we discussed of really representing light and darkness, and if you take it even to the next level, you find that in the story of the Isha Shunamis, right in Tanakh, we find the Melachim base with Elisha, the prophet, that he performed a miracle, similar miracle also with um, Elio and Navi, and it all starts with a, a little bit of oil. That means a little bit of oil is a source of such incredible Yeshua. So we're here we're in the month of Hanukkah, and I want to jump into Hanukkah. Can't hold back from Hanukkah, so this is going to be already the second Hanukkah video. And Mitzvah Hashem, we're going to discuss much more, even though we're in the middle of Hilcha Shabbos and incredible questions that we're discussing. But Hanukkah, interesting, we'll start off with the Chidush Arim. I once heard this amazing statement of the Chidush Sharim and he said, there's a Mishnah, the Gemara says in Masech HaShabbos where it discusses, if you want to get into Hanukkah, it's really just three daf. So the Mishnah, the Lashon of the Mishnah is Psilo Shushmanim, the wicks and the oils, Sha'amu Chachomim, that the Rabbi said, En Madlikim Ben B'Shabbos, you now that you use them on Shabbos, meaning for the candles of Shabbos, Madlikim Ben B'Chanukah, you're allowed to use on Hanukkah. Now the simple understanding is based on a halachic discussion whether you're concerned that it's going to go out if you use bad wicks. But the chassidish pshat, the deep pshat, something that is so, so, so important for us to remember is that the psilas and the shmanim we know represent the wicks and the oils, represent the neshama of a, of a Jew. As it says, ner Hashem nishmas adam, a candle represents the neshama of a Jew. So the chidush Sharim says, those candles those neshamas, that even the wicks and the oils, meaning that it can't be lit by Shabbos, Chanukah, you're able to light them up. Somehow there's something so special about Chanukah. You look even around, until, until today, you'll find the people that don't keep Shabbos, but they'll put that menorah, that electric menorah, and in, in a way they're actually fulfilling the mitzvah. Pais that hold, you could be yotzeh. We'll discuss that, the halachic discussion about that. But the fact that the soul, the neshama, is cooling out and saying, I'm also part of this miracle of Hanukkah. And the miracle of Hanukkah is, is that even if there's a little bit of leftover oil, it could still be reignite, reignited. And that's this, um, we have to get into, first of all, the Hanukkah, the neshamas. So, Blina, we're going to continue with this. There's a Yid that I met recently. My new friend, his name is Menachem. I met him in El Tzisual, and I wanted actually to show you pictures of a shul in Tel Aviv that this Yid, young guy, a Menachem Ramelstein, and this guy is changing Klali, so he's changing the world. Mamish, I, I want to be, I said I have to be in partnership with such a person. We all have to be. He basically, in, in, a, in a nutshell, started Kololim all over Israel. And he's still, he's looking for, I told him, we're going to get the right people and the right amount of money, and this could be Mamish, the, uh, the next step to the Geula. But in a nutshell, basically what he does is he raises money, starts koilim in all the different areas in Israel, and slowly but surely these koilim basically they come, guys come, regular guys in kola, and learn with the different people in the shul, in the community. Communities they have nothing, they don't have shul, they don't have mikvahs, and slowly things fall into place and they get excited and the community itself adopts it. This is the most amazing actually, even money wise, for people that are look to, looking to invest. And, um, but the Chiddush is Tel Aviv. Wow. I went to Tel Aviv. In the heart of Tel Aviv, what goes on? How many, how many neshamas need to be reached? The neshamas that are low, the tent fachim, so deep. So in the shul that hasn't been occupied since 1932, I think it was the Alta from Slobotka, if I'm not mistaken. He was in the shul. The Chazanish was in Tel Aviv, also interesting. They started now, they have 70 guys learning in this call. And they're reaching out to souls and the shamas and igniting them. Lineda, we're going to discuss more. Have an amazing, amazing lichtuk a day.